In this special episode, I brought in a secret guest and we're going to share with you four Final Cut Pro tips Apple doesn't want you to know. Okay, so Apple isn't hiding anything from you, but we do have four lesser known Final Cut Pro tips you may not know about. And the secret guest I brought in is none other than the super talented cinematographer Dylan John. I'm sure you all know who Dylan is, but just in case you don't, Dylan also has a YouTube channel with a ton of awesome Final Cut Pro tutorials. I'll link his channel in the video description below. Go subscribe if you haven't yet. Thanks for joining me, Dylan. Thank you so much for having me on your channel again, Serge. I am stoked to be here and I am stoked to share this first tip, which will hopefully blow your socks off. Okay, that was lame, I know, and I'm sorry. This first tip will allow you to edit faster and it'll make sure that you use all the best clips and best parts of clips in your edit. Chances are that you already know that if you select a clip or a part of a clip in your library and press F on your keyboard, you'll favorite that media. This comes in handy because not only can we see which media we like just by noticing this green bar over the media, but we can also go to this drop down menu, select favorites, and now we have our full list of the best clips. But what happens when we start using a bunch of these favorite clips in our edit and we're struggling to find what parts we have not used? Yes, we can go into view, browser, and hit used media ranges which will show us what clips or parts of clips we've used by way of an orange bar here. But even that doesn't mitigate how frustrating it can be to have to scroll through all the media, some in different events maybe, just to find the unused parts of clips that we like the most. Check this out though. Go to File, New, and hit Library Smart Collection. You can also press the shortcut Option, Command, and N. From here, I'll rename this Unused Favorites. Double click the gear icon, which will allow us to bring in and exclude media that fits or doesn't fit certain parameters. Hit the plus sign, ratings, and now all of our favorite clips or segments of clips are added to this smart collection. Hit the plus sign again, hit used media, and switch this to unused. Now if we click off and come back in, you'll notice that you have a dedicated smart collection with all the media you love and have not been used in the project. Even if the media is only a little part of the original clip, just that part will show up. And even if the media is spread amongst different events, it'll show up in this one smart collection. Quick and easy access to help you edit faster and prevent a lot of hair pulling. Tip number two is modifying Final Cut Pro's built-in transitions. For example, if you had a default cross dissolve transition, which by the way, you can do with a keyboard shortcut command T, it's pretty boring. What many people don't know is you can actually modify the look of this and many other transitions. Select the transition clip in your timeline and head up to the inspector window. For this particular transition, you have 12 different looks you can choose from. So if you select shadows, the darker parts of your second clip come in first, followed by highlights. We just took our boring old cross dissolve transition and turned it into a much more trendy luma fade. Next time you add a transition to your project, have a look in the video inspector and see how you can turn a boring old transition into something much cooler. Tip number three is probably one of the single greatest modifications that I've done to Final Cut Pro to help me edit faster. It's putting your sound effects directly into Final Cut so you can quickly access any sound you want and the big plus is that you can see the audio waveform, you can quickly play out the sound, scrub and select the section of the sound effect that you want which is something you can't do if your sound effects are in a folder outside of Final Cut. You'd have to bring it into FCP first. So here's how you set this up. Go to whatever folder you're using that has all of your sound effects, and if all of your sounds are spread out and not in one place, I'd recommend that you create a new folder and put all of them in there. Then right-click that folder and hit Make Alias. This is gonna create a mirrored shortcut folder for this main folder. If that confuses you, what this means is that whenever we put new sound effects into this original folder, it'll be transferred to this alias folder as well. Now let's place this alias folder in the right spot. Copy the alias folder by pressing Command C or copy by right clicking and pressing here. Then you can delete this. Head into your computer's hard drive, which usually you can access by going to Go, Computer, Hit your hard drive, which is usually Macintosh or Macintosh HD, then library, hit audio, go to Apple Loops, Apple, Final Cut Pro sound effects, and here we can see all the Final Cut Pro sound effect folders that you can normally see within the software. All we're gonna do is press Command V to paste that alias folder. I'll take off this timestamp so it looks good in Final Cut. 
And if you head into Final Cut, you'll see that we have our sound effects folder and all of the folders within our sound effects library. And anytime you want to add more sound effects, just find the original folder and drop these sound effects in. No need to go through that deep file system that we just went into. Hell yeah! The last tip I have for you today is a three finger drag. And I have to thank Matthew O'Brien for showing me this one. It's been a game changer. If you use a trackpad with Final Cut Pro, this tip can save you a ton of time and greatly improve your workflow. Until I learned how to do this trick, to move a clip in Final Cut Pro or move any file on your Mac, I had to click and hold down the trackpad with my index finger on one hand and use my other index finger to drag my clip or file. There's a much better way to do the simple step. But first, you have to turn this feature on. Go into your system preferences, select accessibility, pointer control, then trackpad options. In here, enable dragging, and from the drop down menu, select three finger drag. Now, in Final Cut Pro, when you need to move a clip, instead of using both hands, just place your cursor over the clip you need to move, place three fingers down on your trackpad, and drag them to move your clip. Even if you run out of space on your trackpad, just move your fingers over and keep on dragging. This can also be used to drag any file or window on your Mac. Try this out, and I promise you'll never go back to using two hands. I hope you found at least one of these tips helpful. If you did, let me know by hitting the like button or in the comments below. And a huge thank you to Dylan for joining me today. If you haven't yet, make sure to check out Dylan's channel. He has a ton of amazing Final Cut Pro tutorials and other filmmaking tips. I'll link it in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.